Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to Listen Up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies! Welcome back to Listen Up with not Phil, but just Ryan today. So you guys are stuck with just me for today's game recap. Phil will be back joining me uh, not until Tuesday after the Marquette game. So Tuesday night, me and Phil will be back on recapping the Marquette game. Second time the Huskies are playing the Golden Eagles. So no last check in for us. But like I said, we will both be back after that game on Tuesday night after hopefully another UConn win like they did today. UConn absolutely dominating the the the, the, the DePaul Blue Demons at home, returning to Gamble Pavilion. 12 straight wins for the Huskies. Let's get straight into the game recap. Paige Becker has got to start it off right away with the bucket. I really like UConn's pace and ball movement right from the start of the game. They were struggling to make an outside shot. Really the only negative thing from today's game was UConn really couldn't get the three ball going, but that's about the only negative thing from UConn's side of things today. Meanwhile, on the other side, though, the DePaul, they started three for eight from three-point land, and I'm thinking, well, here we go again. UConn's going to fall behind because the other team can just not miss uh, from three from the field in the first quarter. But all of a sudden, UConn got things going, uh, started to started to get some, some shots made. Uh, just in 23 seconds, the Huskies go on a 6-0 run thanks to back-to-back -back baskets by Ashlyn Shade. The, one of them a, a layup, the second one coming on the inbound play. Ashlyn gets a steal, lays it up again. Uh, and the third one is a Paige Becker's steal and score. DePaul calls a timeout. UConn, after the timeout, did not stop the scoring run there. They finished the quarter on a 20-3 run. DePaul couldn't get anything to fall, but the Blue Demons didn't help themselves by having 10 turnovers, and the Huskies' defense was also relentless yet again. Paige and Aaliyah already up to 10 points as UConn opens the, the first quarter and ends the first quarter with the 30-14 lead over DePaul. The Huskies in the second quarter, Paige continued to stay hot uh, from the field. DePaul re relying heavily on the three-point shot still. They made a couple in the first quarter, but really couldn't get much to fall after that. It also didn't help. Like I said, uh, they continued to turn the ball over, very careless with the ball. Uh, for as many points as DePaul usually scores, very, uh, very uh, unusual from DePaul with how careless they were. But again, uh, you know, huge credit to, to the Huskies defense, um, you know, huge part and why DePaul really struggled to, to get any passes through hard to get their offense going today, uh, which gave UConn a lot of extra possessions and opportunities. UConn scored 28 points off of DePaul's 18 first half turnovers. The Blue Demons just had seven points. In the second quarter, long scoring droughts for DePaul in the first half uh, and some in the second half, too. They also committed 15 fouls, with, which which didn't help their calls. Uh, Paige and Aaliyah both closing in on 20 points at the end of the first half. Aaliyah, a perfect 10 for 10 at the free throw line as well. Huskies up big at the halftime, 49 to 21. And going into the second half, not much change. UConn just continued to flat out dominate. Ines Betancourt played for most of the quarter because of the score. Uh, it's always good to see Ines come in to the game out there hustling. She got a steal that led to a bucket. She also made a, a deep two in the fourth quarter. You can see her hard work starting to pay off. She, you can tell she's been working a little bit. Um, and when she gets the opportunity to play, you can really see uh, that hard work starting to pay off for Ines. Amari DeBerry also checked in towards the end of the quarter. She went on to score a season-high eight points today. So shout out to Amari having another, uh, get, getting an uh, opportunity to play minutes and having another very solid game for UConn today. Final score from Gamble Pavilion, UConn 88, DePaul 51. And I, I know I've said this the past couple of recaps, but it truly is amazing to see UConn playing like this. They have four players out for the season, uh, five including Caroline Ducharme, who is not out for the season, but I believe she's only played four games the whole season. So 
Um, just with, with four players out for the season, I, I mean, how many other teams in, in the whole country are going to win 12 games in a row with four players out for the season? I, I mean, it, it's just truly incredible. Everybody ate today again for UConn as all nine available players scored again. Paige Beckers, 20 points, five rebounds, five assists, and four steals. She really did it all on all fans. Offense and defense again today for UConn. Um, you know, like I said, got got the ball rolling there a little bit in the first quarter. Got the first points on the board, and you know, like, like the announcer said, I, you know, I just feel like when Paige scores, she opens the game, um, starts to get the offense rolling a little bit for UConn. Everybody can kind of take a deep breath, and I feel like that just allows for the whole team to really open up. Then, and it allows everything to just. Uh, get going for for UConn in a sense. Aaliyah, 18 points. She was perfect, 10 of 10 from the free throw line. UConn as a team today, 23 for 24 from the free throw line. So like me and Phil have been saying for the past couple episodes, that, that's going to be really, really important. And hopefully UConn can keep that up for the whole entire season, especially when we, we, we start into um, you know, toward, towards the end of February going into March because free throws, very, very important in March. So it's good to see that they're shooting uh, f- fairly well from the free throw line. Ashlyn, a uh, n- nice bounce back game from her today, 21.7 rebounds. Again, played most of the game, but definitely a very, very uh, nice bounce back game from her in front of the home fans. Nika locked up Anea Peoples for for. Pretty much the entire first half. I don't believe Anea Peoples had any points in the first half. I believe she ended the game with eight points. Um, but, you know, shout out to Nika for always, pretty much always shutting down the opponent's uh, highest scoring player. And she did it again today on Anea Peoples. Also, uh, seven more assists today for Nika Mule. And I believe she moved into to the eighth all-time and UConn uh, team history for assists. So shout out also to Nika Mule for that. Uh, DePaul, again, really struggled to set up their offense, very careless with the ball. They had a total of 27 turnovers today, so that that definitely didn't help. DePaul's calls at all uh, just allowed for UConn to get a ton more opportunities. And like we usually say, UConn's defense leads to their offense, and that was definitely the case for UConn today. I'll go over a couple comments from the last video uh, from DePaul last check-in, and I will sign off for today. The first comment, uh, let's go over to Pablo Anak 01. UConn 95, DePaul 58. He says, if everyone plays to their level on the Husky side, well, uh, pretty, pretty, not not too far off from there from the score prediction. Uh, I love seeing the score predictions in the comments because some people actually get pretty close. Definitely a lot better score prediction from whatever I said in the last check-in. Uh, I thought these past couple of games were going to be close. The, the one against Seton Hall, uh, it started out close, but the final score really wasn't close. And I, I, I just really expected uh, DePaul to just come in and put up a little bit of a fight today in Gamble Pavilion. I, I know I was probably crazy for, for for saying that when UConn returning home because they're perfect at home. They, they don't really do anything wrong at home. Of course, they haven't during this whole win streak. But uh, yeah, UConn just very, very dominant yet again today. Um, second comment, let's go over to Stevie Kenzie. He says, being a UConn and huge Paige Beckers fan, I appreciate Phil and Ryan's content immensely. I hope Ash uh, will be able to get herself free a bit more to get her shot off this game. Looking for Ice and Q con- to continue progressing. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, we we tried to uh, to bring out consistent co- uh, content uh, so so thank you for those kind words. But yeah, Ashlyn, um, you know, definitely, like I said, great bounce back game from her. Played most of the game. Um, you, you know, it, it's nice to see her also driving the ball because, she, as we know, she's an excellent three point shooter. Uh, but she also is a good ball scorer as well, creating her own shot, being aggressive, driving the lane. Uh, she wouldn't have really done that, I, I don't think, a month or so ago when the with season initially started, when she was just kind of getting her feet wet, let's say. 
Uh, but it, it is certainly nice to see Ashlyn driving the ball, creating her own shot, and not being afraid to score. And that really goes for the whole team as well, being confident with their shots, continue, continuing to shoot, even though sometimes they might not be falling. But as of lately, most of them have been falling. So it's definitely nice to see. Ice and Q, yeah, Ice Brady played a, a pretty solid game today. Uh, and Caden Samuels did as well. You know, there really hasn't been many bad games amongst uh, any of the UConn players as far as that goes during this win streak. But I, I believe Caden Samuels is beginning to progress ever so slightly as she did get uh, quite a few minutes today again because of how the score went. But uh, another good game from Q, I'd, I'd say today, got a couple steals, made a couple baskets. So, uh, yeah, all around good games today. Uh, but And we'll, we'll end off on Jason D'Amico, of course. Uh, he says, me, a star, I can't even match, match my socks. Seriously, though, Phil's thoughts uh, tug at the heartstrings and speaks for all of us here uh, who are UConn fans and dedicated followers of this Listen Up podcast. To say that I look forward to every up upload is a gross understatement, and both of you, as well as your crew, will always have my support. This podcast, uh, fandomly, yes, that, that is a word, uh, word in my world, is some of the coolest peeps on the web. Keep it up, moving forward, boys. I see the Paul giving UConn a rough time, but it will not be enough to overcome UConn's talent. UConn wins a close one, UConn 76 to Paul 68 piece. Well, of course, like I said, uh, shout out to you guys for making this fandom fandom family what whatever you want to call it possible uh we love we love to see all the comments and of course as always appreciate all of you watching liking coming through subscribing all that good stuff so like we say wouldn't be able to do it without you guys but yeah jason pred predicted a close game as well and so did i but it turns out it it, it didn't quite go that way um, but yeah, again, just thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, comment away. Um, but you, like I said, me and Phil will be back on Tuesday night after the Marquette game. And hopefully it's another happy ending for UConn as UConn has went on to win 12 games in a row now, uh, staying undefeated at home, another good home cooking game for UConn today. So with that said, I'll sign off for today. And I will see you guys on Tuesday night, hopefully after another UConn win over Marquette.